State University of Charlotte, I visited Raleigh, I visited many of those universities, and the serenity and the calmness and the, and the voice of God, which I could listen when I entered here, it brought me God. I was born this time where I could study in this kind of environment. So all of you are very fortunate to be a part of it, and I salute Rama family. And while I'm doing so, I also owe a debt to Rama family. Dinu by Rama, I pay tributes. He's no more. But when he came to set up a hospitality center, a hotel here, he asked my advice. What do you think about the hotel here? I said, look, the people are very conservative, so they eat outside on the streets, lorries, garages. So I don't know how the hotel will be. I didn't know he was meaning something deeper into it, because that time we were setting up a very big complex here. Perhaps he thought how Reliance will support that kind of venture. I got the message and I said, Sir, here in my capacity, I commit 48 rooms the day they are started. And believe me, Sir, this was one major factor which was responsible for our success in this area and setting up the world's largest petrochemical complex, which I has mentioned. I've steered it from the first break. So this is a little talk about it. But nevertheless, uh, thank you very much, uh, the professors who have accompanied me and uh, respected young ladies, boys, girls, <coughs> and gentlemen who are all here in this audience. Before I entered here, I asked this question, B109, and it is wisdom. I asked Hasmukh uh, Bhai, what is it I'm expected to talk? He said, this is the place we want to share the wisdom. But I have never believed that I am one who has a higher wisdom than any one of you. But I have traveled a long journey from those days when the country was absolutely underdeveloped for going from here to Europe for this few dollars for an exchange, and I know a number and number of trips I made to United States. I used to live on one piece of pizza. That was the kind of situation. One piece of pizza, and the balance money I used to save it, bringing some gifts for my family. I have two kids, one son and one daughter. They were two young. Always expect, Papa, what did you bring for me? Child, let me sacrifice my hunger, appetite, thirst, and carry something for the family. That is something which I am happy that brought the children so well that they have a feeling of debt gratitude. That father did that for us. How could he do that? What a piece of pizza. My son lived in Charlotte. I went to your house, sir, near Charlotte. And when he started, I said, look, I will not finance you. He started selling pizza in the night. I said, go ahead, do it. And I asked him, what else can you do? 
said, Papa, tell me. I said, no. Find out your own path. Then he started selling newspapers. And I'm glad today he's one of the very important executives of our leading international company. And same way my daughter lived in Charlotte for 15 years. And they were groomed and developed. So you young people are blessed. Let's count his blessings. These are his blessings, divine power, which has brought this institute for all of you. How many such institutes? There are plenty and plenty. But what are they focusing? Business. Education has become a business. Are we pretending to be helping the national economy, nation building, creating employment opportunities, values? I don't know. I leave the question to you. But anyway, to take some lead, uh, may I ask this group here, what are your challenges? One person, one person, what is your challenge in life? One person, please speak it out. Speak it out, don't be shy. Otherwise I'll come and talk to you. Speak it out, what is your challenge? Come on, come on. Come on, please, don't be shy. Otherwise you will never go up in life. I said count his blessings that you are here today. I count his blessings that I am here with you. And I don't know we will meet again, but certainly I want an answer from you. What is your challenge? No one is speaking. There are uncertain challenges around us. Please speak a little loudly. There are uncertain challenges around us. It could be from family. It could be out of the family. Undecided challenges. Many. Great. This group, what is your goal? Come on. Don't disappoint me. I'm like your dad. Working and out of your comfort zone. Pardon? Working out of your comfort zone. Working out of your comfort zone is your goal. Great. This group, what is your aspiration? <coughs> Come on. Go ahead. Don't be shy. What is your aspiration? And I aspire to be a person who can solve problems of many. I aspire to be a person who can solve problems of many. That means there is a touch of some values. Dr. Abdul Kalam was talking to a very big audience, former president, and one young girl, 10 years old maybe, walked up on the podium to him. His Excellency, I want your autograph. And as Abdul Kalam is known for his love for kids, he took her in the lap and said, yes, here is my autograph. Better tell me what is your aspiration? What is your goal? What do you want to do in life? You know what was the answer? His Excellency, the President of this country, I want to be the citizen of a developed country. I don't want to see any poverty. I don't want to see millions of people living in shackles. I don't want to see people have no sanitation, no schools, no medical facilities. His Excellency, can, you, can your government do this? That's my aspiration. And to us, we have different kind of challenges, different kinds of goals, different kind of aspirations, but above all, 
is the nation, the country, which we are blessed. And it's a great country because of all, you know it very well, whatever literature is available, whatever now. When I turn a page, your institute had followed Shri Arbindu's philosophy, Mother's philosophy, her teachings. What are they leading us to? Make us complete citizens. It's citizens who has a heart. A citizen who has a pain. A citizen who has no ego. A citizen who has humility, which I notice in many of you. With this kind of generous remark, in my career, I could not climb up the ladder, as you say. Similarly, Edmund Hillary could not climb up 29,000 feet in one go. He had three attempts. And when he went back to his home country after failure, you know, my friend, he had put a big board of Everest, and which was, he looked at the Everest. Yes, today you are taller than me, but the day will come, I'll be taller than you. I promise to my countrymen, I will do it. And the history tells you, of course, he's no more. He climbed the Everest. He climbed above 29,000 feet, taller than the Everest. That's the mission, that's the goal, that's the challenge which revolutionizes you. When, when I started myself, after all this, universities, this and that, and those good old days, a jet aircraft used to take to Germany, 120 seaters. And before I was going, my boss called me. He said, look, you are going to Germany. Don't take drinks there. I said, sir, I will <coughs> do my best. Then he says, he looks at me with the eyes in it. All right, once in a while you can take beer. He said, all right, sir. Then he says, you know, you have very limited money. Hide it inside, inside pocket. Take it inside pocket. And when I read Germany, it is cold, very cold. No difference between day and night, dark. I was taken to the director of that company. And he looked at me and shouted, hell of his voice. I said, what has gone wrong? I've come here for purpose. And one young lady came, pulled me out, said, come. I didn't know a word of German language. She pulled me out and she was dragging me, took me to the streetcar. On the streetcar, we went. Then streetcar moved. I said, where are you taking me? I speak in English. He said, come, come, come. I said, come on, tell me. Where are you doing? <laughs> tell me today. Kaufhof. That's the biggest departmental store in Frankfurt. Kaufhof. She took me. She says, you select an overcoat in language, in symbol. <laughs> I looked at her. I said, but no money here. I said, keep quiet, select. I picked up. Then, hand gloves. See, hand gloves. Then, here, a muffler. A muffler. All that is done, and she cladded me, and then she again dragged me into the streetcar, back to his office of Dr. Miller. His name was Dr. Miller. He saw me, 
Ah, he gave a fixed mind. Yeah, no, it's okay. In his language, he said, that is the human values. A stranger. He has nothing to me. I should live or die. It's hot or cold. Do we have that feeling for human beings? Certainly not. Do we feel gratitude for someone who does things? Do we feel gratitude for you, sir? This nation should salute you. How many business empires are coming out and sharing their time? <coughs> Leave aside the man. How does that? We are ungrateful. Another incident I will share with you. There is the city of New York. Time was evening, 7, 8 o'clock. I was to check in that hotel. It was 70 floors or something. And got into the elevator. A person started talking to me. He was American, so no problem in conversation. Went on talking, what I do, from where I've come, and all this kind of personal discussions went on and on. The elevator went three times up and down. And the fourth time, I said, please let me go, I have to check in. He says, I have a request. So, I have a request. I said, what is it? You have a drink with me, a stranger. Have a drink with me. Okay, 35th floor or some floor there is a bar or some drink. Then the bar, he proposes to me, Mr. Kohli, have you seen the city of New York? I said, I have first time come here. And Tomorrow I have to go to this company and World Bank is uh, supporting me. He said, do you mind if I show you the city? At that hour, in the night, 9, 9.30. I said, look, what is this time? He said, don't worry, don't worry. Take it easy. I said, but my luggage here? He said, okay. You can keep your luggage in the room, and then he takes me out. I believed in taking risks in life, ventured with him. He drove me all through the city, good streets, bad streets, all. 3, 3, 30, he brought me back. And in the morning, I went for my work. Evening, I come back, five o'clock evening. So I asked the hotel, I want to talk to Charlie in this room. He said, Charlie? He's there in the portico. I said, what, what is doing there, in the portico? He's in the ambulance. I said, so what? But Charlie has left a message for you. Don't follow me, let me go. <laughs> Don't follow me, let me go. I went outside, rushed. After one hour I received a message, Charlie is no more. Charlie is no more. And the in-between part of the story which I wanted to tell you now was, he played a tape recorder in his room and showed me some war scenes when he was in the Second World War, somewhere in Europe, he tended to blah, blah, blah. And uh, he was lifted by a man on his shoulder and brought to my room where his bullets were removed. And since then, he had a picture of a man before him, not a sack, huh? believe me. He has seen hundreds and hundreds of people mentioned in that. Not limited to a sect, but a person. And he brought it 
and his life was saved. And while showing the tape, he mentioned, I have been looking for this man for the last 30 years. Hundreds of people I could not find. My Mohinder Singh. And today I found, I wanted to pay my debt to this Mohinder Singh for saving my life. These are the values which take place in life when you do something. After 30 years, the gratitude is being paid to someone who has no relevance. His face, his talk, his style, that's what it happens. I reached, since I've been asked to talk on this, I reached in city of Madras when I was working for the private sector early 60s. I got down at the airport from Bombay to Madras flight and uh, one gentleman, Mr. Krishna Murthy, received me and drove me to a plant which was under construction and I was sent there as a specialist. I was a young man. <laughs> the people who were doing the commissioning work of that plant were Britishers and other nationalities. They saw me and laughed and laughed and laughed. I asked Murthy, I said, what has happened? He said, sir, my advice, you go back. I said, why? You are too young to solve this issue. There have been several foreigners who have visited and this problem could not be solved. So respectfully, don't touch here anything. That's why they are laughing at you. They are seeing young men, but they are I said, look, Mr. Murthy, I've never accepted defeat in my life, good or bad. I want to work on it. You persuade them that they should allow to me to work on their plant. He talked to that chief of that area. He, he said, please, he should reconsider. He should not bugger up our unit. We are hard pressed for time. Anyway, God bless us. I worked whole night. Early hours of the morning, God gave me that, that there is a design failure and that design has to be changed and I have the capacity to change the design, which was done in the morning before the people came. We started the unit, blah, blah, blah. Then Mr. Murthy, while taking me to the hotel, he says, he started telling me, no, sir, sir, I don't know how I have offended you. Will you come with me? I said, where do you want me to go? He says, come with me. He took me to a photographer shop and asked that photographer to give me the photograph of Sai Baba Patabhukti. The photographer said, why this North Indian fellow, you want to give a photograph? Sai Baba is here in Madras today. Why don't you take him there? God bless us. I forgot about my work and went to meet Sai Baba. Whole day I was sitting till 12 o'clock. The people where he was living kicked me out from their courtyard. That you get out from here, Saima will not come. I said, good. Next day morning again, leave side my work. I was sitting there. But very scared in myself that what I am doing, what my company will think of. Send me to do the work or run after 
spiritual leaders. But God bless Sai Baba gave me that chance and the unit was running. Somebody was running that unit. That is the divine power which runs, takes care of you. Once you have a goal before you, when you have an aspiration before you, once you have a challenge before you, and you believe in the value system. I will tell you some more stories of this child. How many time we have? We have time. Five minutes? I was heading this neighboring industry. Thirumai Ambani was setting up a large complex investing with money. So that Bhumi Pujan was to be done in this. Second knows the story. In that Bhumi Pujan, I being the neighbor, was called, otherwise there was entire family, nobody else. So I was sitting with Dhirubhai and Mr. Mukesh Ambani and his wife Nita found the puja, came to Father Virubhai. What a culture in this state, believe me. They came and Mukesh Bhai, a graduate from Stanford, touched Father's feet. I immediately got up and went behind. It was very embarrassing for me. The next moment I see Nita Bhain also coming and touching Dhiru Bhai's feet. When I saw this happening, I had nothing to do with this company, nothing except that I was a neighbor. And I thought of myself, what a culture it is where they are not forgetting the debt of parents that parents have given me. That is what it is. All this. So if at all I can help their project, I will not hesitate to do it. While being outside, I used to extend whatever help is needed. And one day I get a call from Dhirubhai Ambani. Kohli ji, Mr. Kohli, kithar hai? Okay, I have a plan. Chale ao. Sir, kaha ana hai? Aray, chale ao na. Mer ka kaha ana hai, sir? Ye mera company mein idhar jo chalu kar raha tha na, bho me pujan kiya na. Abhi uska kaam aage badha na hai. To usko chalao. Hey, sir, kithar mein idhar achha bala hai? काम कर रहा हूँ इसको छोड़ के किधर आ जाऊँ अरे चले आओ ना चले आओ दिस द टॉक दिस कंटिन्यूड फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स और वन ईयर एंड ही विल टेलीफोन मी वेरी ऑफन मोर ऑफन देन रिक्वायर्ड ये अभी तक आए नहीं आए नहीं आए नहीं सब गवर्नमेंट से बात कर रहा हूँ प्लान ना लूँ करना जो भी कुछ आई वाज Malani kya hoga, kya nahi hoga. A day came, I was there, left this place, went to join him. And I said, sir, my only objective is, his people asked me what salary I want. I said, whatever you pay to the people, you pay me. I'm not, no, 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 you may have requirements, this and that. I said, I have no requirement except I want to contribute to the nation. I'll be having a challenge to build the world's <coughs> largest petrochemical complex and I will do it. I don't think I have ever seen a difference between day and night. And that is the reason when Hamida and Sekhan has talked about 160 awards, not for me, by my face or something. Contribution to the society, contribution to the nation. 
making new benchmarking standards worldwide. We don't believe it. that knowledge is the monopoly of people living across the seas. We have enough potential. Dhirubhai used to say to all of you young people, they are the powerhouse of this country. <coughs> what they need is a trigger. If they trigger the trigger, I use the word, what is it you don't have energy? Then I was wishing you good morning. You are the source, you are the fuel for the national growth. Country will come up with your soul stirring, giving values to what you are able to do. And there is no limit to any growth. It's in your health. It's in yourself. It is the approach which you take. People talk of Dhirubhai Amani's. I've worked very closely with this gentleman, very closely. I had drinks with this gentleman. But I used to ask him, even he had a paralytic attack in 86, he didn't leave his goal. I said, sir, why do you do this so much? People say, I am your friend, I am your friend. They ask me, why do you do this so much? Sir, why do you do this so much? Sir, why do you do this so much? Oh, you understand, man. मैं दुनिया में सबसे बड़ा बनाना है और बना के रहूँगा। And the day came in how many areas he is number one in the world. Look at his thirty years growth. How much today? Already in three quarters, sixty, fifty-two million dollars of revenue. 300,000 crores of revenue, exports of 150,000 crores export. There was the time when I came here, we used to bring things coming from Japan, from here, from there. Here is the time where containers, hundreds of containers on these roads are moving, going to any part of the world. Who changes it? If there is a difference, there is no difference between him or Bill Gates or Ratan Tata or all of them. It's the approach which is followed, entrepreneurship. But if the academia, this theme was being talked about, if the universities, don't mind it, huh? please. This, not me I am saying, the general feeling about the universities is, is the mass production of people, graduates. Now, somebody said that degree, graduation, degree is worse than a cinema ticket. A cinema ticket you buy, you are assured of seeing a good movie, but a degree you are not assured of employability, a job or something and something. Why is this happening? This maybe we'll talk little later, not to disturb you. But Peter Drucker also, a great human scientist, used to say that our business schools, I found you have different values, different system, are producing clerks. Why is that statement made by a man of his caliber, it was for the reason. Education or graduation is not for social stigma. That my family, or when I get married, you should say that I have a degree, I have a diploma, I have this, I have that. What values I have built in myself, which makes me a better citizen and better entrepreneur in a state where every second person is an entrepreneur. And with your background of what you are getting here, I think you have a whole world is open to you. Look at the 
Look at this. Again, I come back to Thiru Ambani himself. He never went to any university. He never. His father told him, look, I have five children. I cannot afford you. You earn. He would not get a job. But what he thought? Left India, jumped on a carrier ship, went to Eden. Eight years, he struggled, 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 struggled. Entrepreneurship. Because he had a desire in him that I have to do it. I have to feed my family by entrepreneurship. While working, he used to melt the silver coins and sell them as a silver. Learned all trading businesses. So same way, if along with this, whatever you learn, you develop the habit of learning many more things. This is why today's when we talk of knowledge economy, we talk of IT people and internet and blah, 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 all that. Each sector creates more jobs in the infrastructure. If people do not want to be entrepreneurs, they can get into those areas provided they learn themselves, not depend on the institutions and otherwise. But you have to spend the time which you invest today, it will give you the returns tomorrow. If we spend our time, waste our time in many other areas which are not very relevant to your work, this is what you will get. So this life is full of equations. You will balance it. What you sow, so you reap. What you, whatever are your karma today, you like it or don't like it, it will come before you today or tomorrow. When man like Dhirubhai, lakhs and lakhs of people got shares and jobs and opportunities in all his company. How many places, what businesses, growth, phenomenal growth. It doesn't happen by itself. This world also doesn't run without his blessings, divine power, nothing. Same way, no business without a proper approach runs that. So in that business also, you will be directly or indirectly someday involved in it. And then if you have your own commitment that for whomsoever I am working, I have to make it a success. There is no question. Once you enter here, then don't talk about it. My money is less, my this is less, that is less. Take it as a challenge. Make sure you are successful. If you are successful, the organizations, businesses, they'll be successful and the country will prosper more. But if we only demand from the society and don't give back anything to the society, take it from me what it will be. This is what has happened in many areas, many areas. Now the biggest field open is the rural. Biggest, where 60, 70 crores of people are living. That is the area which is virgin. People can walk in, in that area in many ways. Let's see what happens. Now I'll uh, thank uh, the management of the university and once again with my utmost humility say to each one of you, appeal to each one of you to think of your state, your nation, your family, so that all of them prosper and give us a better nation as compared to others. And we are sure of achieving it.